Now I'd like to show you how you can implement a system function h of z as a digital filter in LabVIEW. For this example, I'll be using a notch filter. Its transfer function or system function h of z looks like this. The pole zero diagram is based on a pair of zeros. The zeros are on the unit circle at an angle of theta naught. And we also have a pair of poles at, a, at the same angle, but at a radius r. The notch filter produces a zero response at the frequency theta naught. That's given by the notch frequency in hertz, the sampling frequency in hertz as well. Now as we look back at the system function h of z, we see theta naught appearing here as part of the cosine calculation. We see r, that is the radius, appearing as well. Now in terms of standard notation, this first coefficient that has value 1, this is called b sub 0. The next coefficient is everything that multiplies z inverse. And that would be this piece right here. And this is called b1, and it has value minus 2 cosine theta naught. Then the last coefficient in the numerator is the one that multiplies z inverse squared. And that would be the value 1. Of course, it's not showing, but we know that it's there. And b2 then is equal to 1. And then in the denominator, we have a similar kind of thing, except now the coefficients are denoted a. This would be a0. This expression is a1. And then r squared corresponds to a2. Now for re reasons related to the way digital filters are implemented, we call the a coefficients the reverse coefficients. And this is the way LabVIEW refers to those. The reverse coefficients for us then would be the values 1 minus 2r cosine theta, theta naught, and then r squared. So we order them as a0 through a2. The b coefficients are referred to as the forward coefficients. These are ordered in the same way. We start with b0, which is 1, and go all the way up to b2, which also is 1. Now let's see how we can apply these arrays of coefficients to the LabVIEW uh, digital filter. Look under signal processing, then filters, then advanced IIR, and then pick out IIR filter. That's an abbreviation for infinite duration impulse response filter. Check the help on this one. We see that we have the incoming signal to be filtered, and then the output. We have the reverse coefficients and the forward coefficients. This is a case where a math script node is probably the easiest way to fashion these arrays. The math script node needs to make use of these two frequencies, that is our notch filter frequency, and then the sampling frequency. And it also uses the value capital R. So I'll go ahead and add that as the third input. Let me begin by typing in the math script code for theta naught calculation. I'll call that theta zero. And this is equal to two times pi, and pi is a built-in constant, times f naught divided by fs. And as soon as the uh, text changes from gray to uh, black and color-coded values, then we know that we've typed in a valid line of math script. Vectors are indicated with square brackets. Make use of cosine of theta naught. And then I need also r raised to the second power. That's my a coefficients. The b coefficients are quite similar. 
Only thing lacking there is the R, and then we also end up with one. Now we see the forward and reverse uh, inputs on the IR filter. Let me add two outputs, one for A and one for B. I will then connect my reverse coefficients to A and the forward coefficients to B. And the filter is ready to go.